Hi, welcome once again to another class of the Moji Math and Science. In this class, we'll continue with our topic on projectile motion problems. We'll use these two examples to see how to solve projectile motion problems. We'll not only solve these problems, we'll get started by seeing likely errors students make when attempting to solve these problems. Then I'll show you the correct way to address and to approach these problems. That said, thank you. And let's get started with the first question the first question tells us that the diagram below illustrates the trajectory of a fired missile from a point p at 250 meters per second now look at it if you look at this diagram below please do not mind my sketch this is point p yes point p and yes point point q now and this is my y axis this is my x axis to my y-axis, you observe that the angle, the missile was fired at 42 degrees to my y-axis, to my x-axis. It was fired at 42 degrees to my x-axis. Now, the first thing that should come to your mind is one, to resolve the initial velocity. This is initial velocity u, and this initial velocity we are told is at 250 meters per second. The first thing you should do is to resolve this velocity to the x-axis. Why? Because we are asked to find the distance the projector would have covered from P to Q, which is along the x-axis. One of the first mistakes students would make is to go ahead and use this directly. Please do not use that directly. Now look at it this way. Here is the missile. It was fired. This is U. It was fired at 42 degrees. This 42 degrees to the x-axis. From Sokatoa, we know that the cos of 42 degrees is equal to u of x over 250. Remember that cos theta is the same thing as adjacent over hypotenuse. So that u of x will be equal to 250 cos 42 degrees. Now, if u of x is 250 cos 42 degrees, that means I have resolved my velocity and i've gotten the initial velocity i'll be using for this particular question now remember that we are asked to find distance and know that s now from our equation of motion is equals to ut plus half at squared but here we're interested in the x axis component of u so that we're saying x is equals to u of x into t plus half at squared our a is the acceleration our t is the time our t is the time and t is given from the question as 40 seconds now our a is our acceleration now this acceleration if you observe is acceleration for projectile motion we're talking about acceleration due to to gravity now for the x-axis component for the horizontal component you know that the horizontal component is not under acceleration due to gravity so when you're talking of horizontal axis the horizontal component of distance your a is equals to zero in case you miss our first lesson on projectile motion where we explain this in detail please look in the description below we have placed a link to this to this lesson to help you understand it well now so that s now which is a distance will be equals to ux of t plus half times zero a is zero the whole of this becomes what zero so x is equals to ux times t so my x now will be equals to ux we have said that ux is 2215 cos 42 now it will be times t t is what 40 so that s now will be equals to 250 times cos 42 from my calculator 0 0.4 0 0.7 7431 times 40 now if you multiply this with your calculator you should get you should get 7,431. So x in what? In meters. You to leave, please do not forget to use units. Units are always very important and they add to your scores. Now let's see the second question. Now for the second question, a stone is thrown horizontally with initial velocity u. Our initial velocity in this question is 15 meter per second from a tower now here is a tower that's from a height that is the whole implication of from a tower means it's thrown from a height of 20 meters 
strewn from a height that is 20 meters high and the question says it is strewn horizontally. If the stone is strewn horizontally with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second, that means it's going this way, it's strewn this way horizontally and it must now come to the floor this way, to the ground. It eats the ground at this point. How long does it take to reach the ground? Now, one common mistake students will make is to just assume that since I have an, a velocity of 15 meters per second and a height of 20, the common mistake students could make in searching for time is to divide the distance s, which is close to 20, and divide it by 15. Now, if you do this, this is wrong. This is wrong. Now, let's understand the question first. The first thing you should understand with the question is that this component of this velocity, it has, it has an horizontal component, but it does not have a vertical component because it is thrown horizontally. If it is thrown horizontally, that is, the vertical component of the velocity is equal to zero. So u y here is equal to what zero. Now, and it has gone through a height of twenty meters. Now look at it this way: s again is equal to u t plus half a t squared. S this time around, which is equal to the height, is equal to twenty. Is equal to u. Since we said this is going to be u y because it is going to be the height that is the vertical component y t plus half the height. The acceleration is going to be acceleration due to, to gravity, which is 10 t squared. Now, we have resolved that it has no vertical component for the velocity. So, u is, uy is going to be 0, and everything here is going to be 1. So, that 20 will be equals to half g is 10 and t squared. So, that 20 now is equals to, that becomes... You can this is half so that so that 20 now is equals to 2 here is 1 2 in 10 is 5 that's 5 t squared divide both sides by 5 divide this side by what by 5 5 here is 1 5 here is 4 5 here is 1 5 here is 1 so that 4 is equals to t squared now since t squared is equals to 4 we'll be looking for the square root of of both sides if you look for the square root of this side t will be equals to two seconds that's two seconds so the time to, for the time of flight for the object that is stone the stone that is thrown horizontally to get to the floor will be two seconds with this i hope you understand how to take care of projectile motion problems and if you have likely questions if you have questions please don't hesitate to use the comment section thank you and have a nice day